Welcome back. You're watching HFO TV. Hi, it's Greg Frick again, HFO TV. Thanks for joining us. Today we're here with Leif Anderson, Head of Business Development for Princeton Property Management. Princeton Property Management is a regional firm based here in Portland. Thanks for coming, Leif. Maybe you can give a little bit deeper background on who Princeton and maybe your, back, your background as well. And we'll kind of talk about some of the things we're seeing in the property management side. I'm glad to be here, thanks. Um, Princeton's been around since 1984, um, so 31 years in the Portland market. I would say we're a regional player at this point. We have um, a corporate office in Milwaukee, Oregon, and uh, bricks and mortar offices as well in the state capital, Salem, and up in Vancouver. We were founded by uh, female owner, Freddie Lunt, and uh, she cut her teeth uh, with a company called Robert Randall Corporation, right. who at one time was the biggest multifamily developer in the, in the country. Um, and we've been growing ever since. Uh, the present time, we've got 9,500 units under management. Okay. And the majority of that stuff is mostly seasonal, seasoned, uh, multifamily uh, properties in suburban markets, garden style stuff. And geographically, you go as far south and we've got 2,000 units or so in Salem and its extended areas, Kaiser, that kind of thing. Right. Vast majority of our stuff is in the Portland market and the 25 cities that surround uh, Clark, Multnomah, Clackamas, and Multnomah counties. So you are we're, in Washington State? We're in Washington State as well. Okay. And we've got a couple one-offs on the Oregon coast and in Central Oregon as well. Okay, great. Well, I kind of want to talk a little bit about, you know, for the audience in multifamily, just maybe, you know, what have you seen? How's the economy affected? I mean, we're hearing about rent growth uh, across the board. I'm sure you guys are seeing that as well. Maybe give us a little insight on, you know, the trends that you're seeing in terms of, of that aspect in multifamily. Sure, sure. Yeah, we've had a... a a very bullish last three years, uh, <laughs> yeah. um, not only in our growth in terms of management accounts, but also uh, just general rents uh, in the marketplace. Um, you know, Portland's gone through uh, a metamorphosis of, of sorts in the last three years with a lot of in-migration, mm -hmm. uh, with an educated workforce coming in, um, and people just want to be here for a variety of reasons. So a lot of the demographic trends are really uh, moving towards uh, Portland's favor at this point. So we've been able to increase rents five to seven percent, I'd say, in the last three years. Okay. And um, on an annual basis. On an annual basis. Right. And we continue to see uh, really nice prospects in terms of um, uh, the, the, the properties that we've got uh, to rent on the marketplace. Our occupancies uh, over the last three years on an annual basis have been around seven, 97 percent. Uh, and rent growth has been very strong as well. And so those two combinations uh, have really been an outcome of the positive demographic trends that we've seen. In and, in, and in terms of as we get these increased rents and you know, demographics of more people coming into Portland, from a management company, I know, I know I've talked to other uh, owners who, you know, as we talk about some of these core units in downtown, um, you know, change, the management's kind of had to change a little bit from less of a, well, you're still property manager, but almost more of con the expectation level of what the property manager is performing is almost like a concierge level. Have you seen that across the board as well in terms of services provided from a management, in terms of what the tenant expectation, I guess, is what I'm saying? Yeah, we have. Uh, it's, it's been interesting to note that the multifamily market in Portland and Vancouver um, uh, are somewhat bisected, in my opinion. You've got, you've got the current uh, developments that have taken place that are really selling uh, a, a lifestyle and an experience. Yes. And by that I mean the common area amenities are loaded. You've got rooftop gardens, uh, barbecue pits, common outdoor areas for people to mingle and mix, dog washing stations where a couple years ago it would have been considered a cutting edge kind of amenity is now the norm. Right. Um, and tremendous focus on social media outreach as you had mentioned, concierge services. If you want, someone will pick up your dry cleaning. If you want, someone will set a tea time for you. So that's been interesting to see in some of the newer product right. that has been attractive to the millennials, younger folks, single people, as well as some retirees. Um, on the flip side of that, we manage a lot of communities as well that just provide good quality, clean housing as well, right. where we're seeing people more interested in just affording a place to rent as opposed to being sold that 
long-term experience uh, within the property that they run. Gotcha. And are you seeing? Are you seeing the um, in terms of? Is it the ex the expansion of that? You know, the lifestyle going further out. And I mean, we're seeing now some rent levels in Gresham that have grown. Washington County, we've seen expansive rent levels. It's almost like everything's coming from Portland and kind of expanding out. Are you guys seeing that across? Yeah, the I think that's true. I mean, I think one of the things in a lot of our units that are older that people are trying to do. Uh, because there hasn't been as much developed in the suburbs as there has right. been in the close in areas, is to uh, rehab units and try to get them up to a level that will be attractive to some of the people that are seeing as the norm a higher class of cabinetry, countertops, flooring, common area amenities. So in many of our properties, we are trying to upgrade towards kind of the lower end of the newer or semi-new product so that we can capture some of that robust rent growth that's taken place there. Examples are creating you know, a pet station. If we've got some pro property that's being unused out outdoors, gotcha. for example, right. uh, or to create bike racks for people that are more interested who live on, more, on a suburban basis to be able to commute to their place of work or just for the leisure opportunity of biking within the area. And then what are you doing in terms, I know because you know, we've dealt with Princeton for years, on the, on the budgeting, when you're sitting and doing your forecasting budgeting, I mean, as we've seen the last year and a half, it's been hard for everybody to kind of keep up with these rent levels. I mean, we've had to, for our standpoint, we've had to re-underwrite on almost a monthly, every 60 days of, man, we're hitting our numbers, we're actually above now on the rent level, we need to make an adjustment. How do you, in budgeting for when I'm you're sitting down with the owner in October, or November, and saying, here's, here's our forecast, what are you guys looking at to put it for 16? Is it the same kind of robust demand? Is, are we peeling that back a little bit just to be more conservative? Yeah, I think it, it has been interesting. We've been dealing with a lot of owners who've been buying properties as well for right. us to manage. And just in the three months they're buying a property, we're seeing the top line revenue increase significantly yes. just while they're under contract. Um, so when we're setting our budgets, um, we try to be conservative so we can you know, outperform, but we know that the market continues to increase and we think that the, the supply, which there's a lot in the pipeline, yes. uh, will somewhat create some diminishing returns out there. We're not seeing that quite yet. So I think at this point we're still uh, in line in terms of our budgeting for three to five percent rent growth. Uh, we're trying to monetize every other aspect of income that we can as well. Okay. Um, rubs or utility income, parking income for covered parking or garages, storage income, that kind of Pet thing. Rent. Pet rents, uh, which is common in the marketplace. Um, and so we're still fairly bullish on the revenue side of the equation. And what we've found when we've taken over properties uh, is based on broker pro formas, in the last three years, we've been happy to report that we've been typically outperforming right. you know, the pro forma revenues. On the revenue side. On the revenue side yes. of most of these properties. Yes. So I think that's a testament to the marketplace. Oh, definitely. How, expense uh, side, that's something we probably, you know, are you seeing any surprise on the expense side? I mean, we've, I know locally here, we've had a run up in property taxes. Yes. Uh, water and sewer, some of those fixed costs. I mean, I, you guys probably have a better handle on kind of where those trend, where that's been, and from the actuals. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, on the expense side, to the to the better, we've been in a period of time where we're utilizing Craigslist uh, to a certain extent, Princeton's website, but the advertising and marketing side of the budgeting has gone way down, which has been fantastic yes. because of uh, because of the f Craigslist remains free, which is very nice. But yes, you're right. The, the other expense line items that have um, surprised us a little bit have been the utility side of the equation, which is now only being outstripped typically by property taxes in terms of the highest expense uh, of an apartment building. So uh, in reaction to that, of course, we're trying to maximize the, the reimbursement that we can get off our rubs income as much as we can. Um, I think on the uh, property taxes specifically, you've got you know, we're leasing up some new properties out there in the marketplace and our developer owners have been surprised or are concerned about where their property taxes are gonna get assessed originally yes. from their property once it stabilizes. Because in the end, of the, in the, end, the uh, appraiser's gonna come out there and take the income and apply a cap rate to it. So I think that the, 
the uh, strength of the Portland market could play into some exorbitant property taxes for some of the new construction projects. The stuff that's already in the ground or existing, there's a little bit more insulation to that because of state law that allows right. the assessment to go up only 3% a year. Right, and we don't, in Oregon you don't do a reassessment on sales. So it's, it's really on the new construction where we see a lot of exposure as to where, where are we going to line those things out. And that's been a you know, constant thing we've been in trying to educate our owners and, and developers. Is, you know, you may have it performant here, but let's you know, let's really try to get a figure on. You know, yeah, what we're gonna correct. End up. So we're we're monitoring a lot of the new construction projects that have hit the tax rolls right. on a hundred percent basis to inform the folks that are coming out of the ground with new projects to kind of give them a sense of where those might land. And that's a good thing in terms of some of the services you provide. I mean, we know about property management services. I know in an existing building you're going to handle, you know, the management and the lease. What kind of things can you do for somebody who wants to get into this market in terms of maybe development? Is it something they can get in in a kind of the pre-development stage or working with them on, you know, what this is what's working, this isn't what working? Sure, sure. We love to be engaged at the earliest stage possible. And we're not going to charge someone until we we get a management contract right. and we get revenues flowing through the door. So typically, we like to be brought in if someone's buying an existing property before they get under contract so we can walk them through potentially our take on the broker pro forma, perhaps do a budget for them, right. uh, and maybe be there during the inspection ideally so we can provide some insight as to what we might see going forward or if there's any red flags that we notice. Uh, if someone's going to uh, be a new developer, or build a new property in a certain area. We've got fresh rent comps all the time to offer. We can offer budgeting both on a, you know, a pre-lease basis and what we see as being the lease up velocity and what it's going to cost to uh, market that asset until it gets stabilized and then provide them also with a stabilized budget, which oftentimes they'll send to their other investors or appraisers or other people that a are lender, involved. Construction in, lender. Construction lenders. Right. Uh, in order to make the process better for them. And anything on the, uh, you've, you've seen that surprised you in the market moving forward? Is it, the, is it the demand? Has it just been the strength of the market? I mean, from a management company, you guys all sit down with the property managers. Is there an underlying theme that you keep hearing again and again that's kind of like a, wow? Yeah, I, you know, it, it's been very interesting to see the last three years how rents have taken off. Yeah. And I think a popular sentiment out there is that we're still relatively affordable sandwiched between San Francisco and Seattle, say. Um, it's a desirable place to live. Uh, I think what we, people who've lived there, lived here for a long time are surprised by how high these rents seem to, uh, seem to go. Right. And uh, going forward, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how they hold up. We know that people are paying more and more as a percentage of their income towards housing, and there's got to be a there's got to be a tipping point there. Yes. And so, what we'd like to see is a circumstance under which our assets and the assets of our investors, our owners, are appreciating. And the rent growth is going up at a stable rate, but not at a rate that might be unsustainable when considering right. all the other factors that factor into the, the health of an apartment market. And which brings an interesting question in terms of a management company. Have you had to adjust, as you say, we've got the, you know, especially in the core, a higher percentage of the income is going toward rent. Do you have to adjust your qualifications where, you know, we used to be three times, maybe we'll be down to two and a half, two with the understanding it's not that I'm, you know, letting in a, I want to say lower, you know, a different kind of tenant. It's just they're, they're ready to allocate more of their income towards their housing. Yeah. Um, Many properties that we manage, we've managed for a long time, and for those assets, we've typically kept our traditional uh, approval levels right. of, let's say, monthly income relating to rent at the same level. We typically just work with our owners uh, okay. on that number, in addition to the local market and the actual site of the property in terms of the demographic that's going to be a uh, customer for us there and try to run it off of that. Off of, okay, so it's kind of market driven and depending on where. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Any other, what kind of, is there anything that kind of keeps you up at night from the, from the management side as you're looking in your crystal ball as to, you know? So, uh, the, the question comes up, are we in a bubble right now? Right. Interest rates have been uh, bumping along zero uh, with the Fed for the last five, six years. Yep. And so, uh, when will rates tick up and are the low interest rates effectively uh, inciting investors and owners to take undue risk in the purchases that they're making out there in the marketplace, which makes it tougher for the property management company because we've got higher debt service, right. less money to work with, 
and um, and so I guess the bubble the bubble risk aspect. Yeah, I think it's interesting on our end. What we'll think about is you've got the we I've never seen the demand so high on the investment side, which I think is fueled uh, from interest rates a lot of yes. It. But then we've also, you know, and this is where, you know, the demand on the rental side. And in theory, you would think with the low interest rates, that would curve some of the demand. And their housing should be cheaper. But it's, we haven't seen that at all. And, you know, you kind of wonder, even if we get some kind of uptick in interest rates, it may slow down the investment side. But is that going to slow down the demand in terms of the rent growth? Because, you know, it's just, it's just this immigration into this region is, I think, probably been my biggest surprise. And even talking to developers, I would say, you know, what's the thing that's, kind of was an aha moment. And it's been the strength of the in-migration, which has fueled this astronomical, it, that has just been, I don't think anybody really expected Portland to go from, you know, where it was five years ago to, you know, on the, in the New York Times, it seems like on a weekly basis. And I yes. Think, yes. Yeah, I, I agree. And not only the immigration, but then looking across uh, at maybe a national trend, I don't know if this will stay a trend, but it certainly seems like the ownership versus rental ratio in yes. the, across the country has shifted in favor of rental. Now, I don't know if that, that's a permanent trend, but that certainly, I think, is also factoring into oh, yes. what we're seeing on the demand side and the rent growth uh, you know, in the marketplace here. And typically, we say when interest rates go up that you know, it, it stays kind of more on the, on the rental side. You know, right now, I think it's very high even with low interest rates. We have a low supply in terms of homeowners, you know, homes available. So it's going to be interesting how that will affect um, in moving forward. So. Yeah, and, and with the alternative of buying a home, we're also seeing that the home builders are starting to gear up again, yes. but they're, they're behind the curve. And so now we're seeing a, a kind of a home price bubble take place as well. So if you are a buyer of a home and you're renting right now, you're having to deal with Portland's urban growth boundary, which is artificially squeezing home prices yes. up. You're having to deal with the demand problem uh, with regard to house pricing if you're a home buyer or would be home buyer, which is keeping you in units and also allowing owners and developers to, to push rents and yes. units. And the other thing I always think about is, which is a funny, the things that make this region great is, you know, is what's driving this immigration. And then you have this constant kind of pull and push battle of the things that make us great is what drives people here. As the more people get here, it's harder to maintain those, you know, progress is sometimes a bumpy road. And I think right now we're starting to feel a little bit of, you know, a lot of, wait a minute, do I like, you know, and so it's just been interesting. Everybody wants high, um, high density. Uh, but they don't want heavy, you know, they don't want it in their neighborhood. So I think the next two years or three years, how that's going to, Portland's going to come out of this will be interesting. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's an interesting question that our local governments are getting involved yes. in, the livability of the area, which yes. I think attracts a lot of people. Huge. Close proximity to the mountains, close proximity to the ocean. You've got a culture here that's very interesting and innovative in culinary arts and technology, et cetera. And uh, where's that going to go over time? If too many people pack into here, is yep. that going to cause a strain with the traffic side of things and decrease the livability, which is the main driver of people right. moving here? So it'll be interesting to see how that all definitely, definitely. Comes, comes about. Well, thanks for coming. It was great to talk to you. We'll do it again. And thanks again on coming to HFO TV. Our entire office specializes in multifamily real estate, making HFO the largest multifamily brokerage in the Pacific Northwest. Your success is our passion. Build your legacy with HFO. Call 503-241-5541 or visit our website at hforee.com for more information.